uh, now for our keynote address, an international keynote address. I firstly request the audience to please use the Q&A tab to post your questions during the session. It will be picked up and answered by the speaker at the end of the session if time allows. Reminder also for everyone to participate in the polls and share your opinion on today's cyber security landscape. Look for the poll on top of your screen. Now for our keynote, international keynote on the securing national cyberspace and uh, uh, space with advanced cyber defense technologies. We've got with us Dr. Gabby Saboni, the Director of the Military and Strategic Affairs Program and Cybersecurity Program, the Institute of National Security Studies, Israel. Professor Gabby is a National Security Specialist and a Director of the Military and Strategic Affairs Program, as well as the Cyber Security Program at the Tel Aviv University's Institute for National Security Studies. He serves as a senior consultant to the IDF and other Israeli security organizations. So ladies and gentlemen, now I request uh, Dr. Gabby, who's right here amongst us, to take it forward. Thank you so much, Dr. Gabby, for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and uh, good afternoon, good noon to, to everybody. And um, I will just dive into uh, to the, the topic. Uh, uh, I listened to some of the to some of the uh, lectures uh, and uh, understood that uh, it is uh, been addressing both the national security side and the national cyber security side, as well as the corporate or the, the business uh, side. So I decided I will address um, the audience with uh, with a, a way like a more centralized and uh, and uh, methodolo methodological way that I've developed uh, to uh, evaluate the maturity risk of, uh, of the organization, may it be the government or a government entity, a security entity or a business entity, and to see how we can uh, uh, prioritize our, um, our actions to enhance uh, their cybersecurity. With your permission, I will share my, uh, my screen because I I've arranged a little presentation for you guys. So there we go. Yes, so, uh, so as I mentioned, uh, uh, this uh, I would like to present uh, a model that I've developed within my, uh, my business capacity uh, to um, address uh, this issue that I've just uh, uh, presented. Let me see how I, uh, yes, okay. So uh, the model that, uh, that uh, we will discuss now is, it has four, uh, four pillars. Is uh, one is to understand the, 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 the threat landscape of any organization, of the organization. Secondly, to, to evaluate its uh, cyber defense maturity, the existing maturity, and then to analyze the corresponding relations or the interface between the existing threats and the defense maturity that uh, the organization has. And of course, at the end, to be able to provide a prioritized plan to improve and to uh, close the gaps that we see related to the maturity of the defenses, of course, in correspondence with the defenses. As you know that uh, we normally do a, a risk assessment while it is isolated. We, we do a risk assessment based on, let's say, NIST framework or, or ISO framework, it doesn't matter. And, um, and we see the maturity of threat. In this here, in this way, the maturity threat is only one pillar of the issue because it has to correspond to the actual threats on the organization. So when we consider the threats, we have practically two sources to evaluate. The first one is the typical or generic, there are generic threats, of course, we all know, you know, phishing and this kind of uh, ransomware and, and a variety of uh, threats that we all know. Uh, and there are typical, well, I would say sector Threats because if you are dealing with a, a financial institution, they will have typical threats, uh, different some sometimes different from uh, let's say uh, a hospital or or let's say a security organization or a government of a ministry. <clears throat> so these are the first family of threat, and the second one is actually collecting threats based on intelligence gathering dedicated to the to the organization in, 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 in question. So we would like to collect intelligence from a variety of sources, uh, open sources, and of course, if it's a government organization, then we might use, uh, uh, let's say, government-like uh, sources. 
and and to create a, a map of all of all the uh, the threats or most of the let's say major threats that we are facing. Now, once we have the threat, we would prioritize them with a simple matrix, with the, let's say the impact of the threats and the likelihood of the threat to be uh, in, to be to be. Uh, to attack us. So the impact, it means whether the threat, uh, the, uh, if the threat has been realized, what will be the damage that we will uh, suffer? And the likelihood will be what are the, what, are, what is the probability that we will be hit? So we, we create a, a matrix between one to five and we score, and then we get to the, let's say, to the calculated, uh, integrated uh, uh, threat um, mark. Okay, threat criteria. Then once we have the threat uh, aside, we put them aside and we go to see the maturity of uh, the cybersecurity status of the organization. So the illustration here is that assume that our organization is covered by a dome of, uh, of cybersecurity, but we have holes. As we all know, uh, defense is never perfect and uh, defense will always be penetrated, which we are trying to identify those gaps and holes. Now again, we, uh, we evaluate the, the, uh, the maturity. We can use a variety of framework to evaluate maturity. For example, the NIST framework, we'll see it in a minute. And uh, once we do that, we again uh, look at uh, generate a matrix with the importance of the, uh, of the, of the defense and secondly, with the assimilation. The assimilation means how much of this defense is integrated in our, in our uh, organization, whether it is there, 100% of our servers and endpoints, or it is only a small portion of our, of our infrastructure is, uh, is, uh, is there. We also would like to understand the importance of uh, each defense whether you know the all defenses are not the same some would be more important than the others so we also uh, put them in the same matrix and of course there is the issue of cost because <clears throat> there are some defenses that cost a lot so you don't want to prioritize when you do your prioritize of defenses you put a, a defense that will absorb all all your uh, uh, all your available budget you would like somehow to to manage your budget to get the optimum of your defenses. So we create again uh, such a matrix that you will see and we score, we score our uh, maturity defenses. So here we see the NIST, for example, this is only an illustration of so one way to look at the defenses. We see the NIST uh, framework, identify, protect, detect, respond and recover. All those are, are, are uh, uh, let's say, uh, defenses or controls that we put. And each one has uh, a family asset management, business environment for identification to identify. And each one has a maturity that we evaluated in the uh, previous step and it has a color. It is like really that there is a threat trying to penetrate and to create a, a, a problem here uh, to exploit our system. And we put defenses in the way of the threat in each domain. And, uh, and these defenses are not all in the same maturity. Some are more mature like the green one and some are less mature like the yellow or red one. So that goes on and forth. And uh, if you are aware available, you know, at least you have so many uh, controls you want to evaluate. And there are uh, a variety of, uh, of frameworks that you might want to choose depending on, on the organization. So uh, sometimes it's 100. 150, sometimes it can be 400 different controls that we have to evaluate. So this is uh, the, the step of evaluation of the maturity of controls. Now uh, we will continue. Let's see how this moves on. This is another way of looking at the controls, uh, a, a dashboard way that uh, we've created. So you can either look at each, uh, at each, um, let's say at each family, at each domain, and see the situation of the domain. For example, in this case, uh, in the case of the domain identified, uh, the maturity is very low, and you can see how it is, why it is very low, because you have those 
sub-criteria uh, that uh, generate the domain, or again, protection. This is another way of looking and visualizing the maturity of your defenses. Now uh, the, comes the point when we have to prioritize our plan, and this is a, a little bit uh, tricky, and I would like your attention to listen to what we do here. So uh, we count what we do, we look at every threat, and we, we, we uh, count the relevant threats to every threat, the relevant, sorry, the relevant uh, mitigations to every threat or relevant defenses for every threat. We normally would do about five to six, six major controls that deal with a specific threat. Once we do that, we list the, the, the controls that were most needed for the most extreme threats. So this is how an illustration we do. In this uh, left side, we have the controls that, uh, that we have uh, uh, evaluated their maturity. You see a, a table of controls. This is the least family, uh, identify, protect. You see, the, you see the, 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 the groups and then the actual controls. Each one has its own, its own maturity. And on the right side, you see the threat. So we just have a threat that each one has the threat impact or the threat uh, severity that is there. So assume we take one of the threats and we ask which are the controls that will probably mitigate this threat. So once we do that, we map controls to each threat and just an illust illustration, we just identify which control correspond to which threat. And we do that to all the threats. So once we do that to all the threats, we are able to fuse all the information and see that each threat that we have, for example, requires, in this case, spear fishing, requires four uh, mitigations, four controls, uh, which we see five, three of them are in a very poor uh, maturity level, and one is an intermediate maturity level. That's how we see that. So the priority of dealing with those with those controls is very high because if the threat is very high and, the, is, and let's say the spear threat is, is intermediate, uh, uh, is an intermediate uh, 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 threat, but the controls are very poor, so we might gain, there is of course some analytics behind that, we might gain the priority of dealing with those, with those mitigations very high. So this is how we create a whole list of threats and the mitigation that are dealing with them, each one we prioritize, we are able to prioritize our list. Our list. And so here we see that we count instances of each control for that relevant for its threat, and we see what is the priority of dealing, how many controls were in high priority, how many with medium priority, and how many with medium priority, and this is the way we are able to generate a recommendation to enhance cybersecurity and provide prioritized plan of what needs to be done in conjunction with the budget constraints that uh, we say in the next bit how it should be done. Because if you have a very severe threat and, uh, and uh, the control is very poor, but it's very costly, it is not likely that you will put all your budget on that control, you have to optimize it. This way we are able to optimize and look in a very methodological and analytical way on any organization and to find what will be the best use of their budget in addressing the cybersecurity. So this is very relevant to, to government organization, to security organizations, and of course to business organization from a variety of sectors, it can be the financial sector, the health sector, transportation, you name it, critical infrastructure, all of them uh, um, uh, may benefit from this kind of, of uh, creating, like this kind of prioritized plan. Because you know that uh, there, there is what we call a CISO, the CISO dilemma. The CISO has a budget and he is const continuously bombarded with, uh, with companies, startups that are saying we can solve this issue, we can solve this issue, and, and uh, without a, a roadmap of understanding, a prioritized roadmap, understanding where, where he needs to go and what is his real gaps, he will find himself buying a lot of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, protection devices or protection technologies 
sometimes uh, synergetic and sometimes antagonistic to one each other. So we believe that, uh, that uh, a roadmap, this is one methodology of a roadmap, but roadmap can be generated by other ways. A roadmap for the CISO to, uh, to get a good picture of what he needs to do and in what priority, that will help very much uh, any CISO to, to uh, protect their organization. So uh, this is what we call like a decision support system for cybersecurity. And, uh, and this is, uh, uh, we believe it is very important for, um, for the organization. So uh, with this, I will rest my, uh, my presentation. I will be willing, I hope it was not too complicated, but I was, I'll be willing to take uh, questions, please. Hello, Dr. Gabby. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, that incredible presentation. Uh, well, we're just requesting, we've asked the audience for the questions on the same, but uh, currently we do not have the questions on that. Uh, but everyone's been commenting on your presentation being very incredible. We've just got Abin Bertin who came in and uh, connected and said, uh, very incredible, that's the compliment. And also she, uh, Abin has one question as well. So Abin, I would just request you since uh, Dr. Gabby has just concluded, if you could quickly type in your questions and let us know on the same. Uh, so yes, that is uh, what is happening at the World Cybersecurity Summit, Africa edition. Firstly, thank you so much on that. Uh, Abin wants to know that uh, we can have an example of the sheet. I am not too sure of this question. Okay. I want to know how we can uh, have an example of sheet to implement DSS. First of all, I'm happy. I'll be happy to share my presentation with you. So uh, you can have the presentation and uh, study that more. There are, of course, uh, uh, let's say use cases, but uh, it's, it's difficult to provide it to, uh, because, you know, when you do it, when you do a project to a client, uh, it's very difficult to share that information. But I will be happy to, uh, to, to answer any questions either directly or... But I think the presentation, once I, I provide it, and I will send, let me know, shall I send it to you and you will send it? Uh, yes? Shall I send it the presentation to you? So, uh, Abin, uh, if you could just answer on that, I, I believe that'll be a good uh, and a wise choice, uh, Dr. Gabby, in interest of uh, there is, everyone. There is, there is also an article that is uh, more elaborate and uh, has been published. It was published in the US. So I can share those two, the presentation and the article, but just tell me to whom should I send it and I'll share it with anyone. You can just uh, make it available to all the attendees. It's okay. Sure. Uh, Dr. Gabby, also there's one more question from uh, Aymani. Uh, sh uh, they say that uh, thanks for the presentation. Also the question is how could we prioritize actions when we, can, when we have to deal with strategic concern like digitalization? That's in the Q&A tab, Dr. Gabby. Yes, you know, the, the, in anything we do in life, there is priority. There is never an action which is not prioritized. So we must find a way to prioritize. And if we cannot find a way, it means that we did not try enough. So we have to find and to understand our, our core interest, our, let's say, for when we defend an organization, we'd say you, you have to uh, identify your crown jewels. And you might be willing to, to let go to some uh, peripheral problems, but you have to address the fact that you want to prioritize the defense on your key importance infrastructure or business or operational activity. So this is, this has to be done. And uh, there is no, I would not recommend anyone to do any action before he asks himself, what is the priority of this action compared to other actions that I would like to do and give an answer of course. Sure. Uh, Dr. Gami, also uh, there will be, there's another question which is coming up uh, from Ola Vasi, who says, how customizable is this methodology to address threats around IoT and SCADA systems? This is, a, a, I will be blunt and say that this, uh, that this uh, methodological way or this model that I've developed can be used even to non-cyber. So let, let, 
let alone cyber activity. So it can be used to any risk-oriented uh, domain. So it means that identify your threats, identify your response and mitigation maturity regardless. So of course, uh, IoT and any cyber related, it's more mature for cyber, of course, but the, 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 the concept can be used uh, anywhere. Sure. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Gavi. Uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, comments coming in with regards to uh, definitely getting, your, getting their hands on, on your presentation as well. So thank oh, you I'll, so much. I will share it to you by, by your email, yes? Sure. Thank you so oh. much, Dr. Gavi. And also, if, if you do have a minute, there's one more question from Frederick. Could we take yeah. that? It is Friday. I'm going nowhere. <laughs> okay. Uh, one question is coming. Uh, is there a white paper where we can learn more of DSS methodology? Yes. As I mentioned, there is, asks. there is an article that elaborates a little bit more than my presentation. And uh, it was published in the US. And I will, I will share the article as well as the presentation with you, of course. Sure. So thank you so much, Dr. Gabby, for joining us today on this incredible chat and uh, being a part of the World Cybersecurity Summit. Thank you so much. And I, I congratulate you for having such a wonderful event and uh, hope to see you a lot in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Regards from Israel. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm.